Hi, it's Peter again from Sizzix Central and today, I told you I'd be back, didn't I? Today I want to talk to you about a wonderful range of products. Um, but as you probably already know, we are carrying some other products on our website. If you go to the Tim Holtz Hub, you will see ranges from Ideology, you will see ranges from Stampers Anonymous and of course Ranger Inks. And all of these are developed and designed with Tim and they're there to complement our dies and our embossing folders which are of course designed by the creative wellspring, the force of nature that is Mr. Tim Holtz. People often ask me, what is your go-to tool? Of course I say the big shot, but after that it's got to be Ranger Inks. And I brought along some today. I have, I'm not going to show you brand new product. These are actually my inks. These are, I've been using, some of these have been with me for years. You can see some of them, they're, they're battered and careworn, but you know what, they're still going strong. And uh, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you a few makes that I've done with these inks. And the fantastic thing about them is their versatility. You know, there is a misconception among some people in some quarters that it's all about vintage or grunge or something like that, but it's not. It's far more than that. That is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. Let's have a look at these two to start off with, because let's start where Distress Inks really started. It was making things look vintage, and you can see these backgrounds were created just from ivory card. This is the colour they started off. This is how they ended up. That is distressing. Now we'll take those out, and I'll show you some more backgrounds. Now these, as you can see, these backgrounds were all created with distressings, and it's not about grunge, is it? it it's, you know, the, these beautiful color blends that you can get, the sheer versatility and the sheer amount of colors that are in the range now is quite staggering. Uh, these were created, incidentally, by uh, masking off the area before inking over the top and taking away the mask. Really, really cool. Now, talking about backgrounds as we were, this one, that's quite shabby chic. This one, a little more contemporary. That one, really fresh. And how about that one finally? So, different color blends, completely different. Stunning effect, but modern and fresh. In stark contrast to the vintage make that I showed you at the beginning. So, that's backgrounds when, you, when you're going directly onto a card. Let's have a look at some backgrounds which were created and then we die cut from them. Two different techniques to get these. Same colors, this was blending with a blending tool. This was actually spritzing, uh, putting the ink on the craft mat, spritzing and then picking it up with the paper. So dipping the paper in the ink to get that effect. Oh, and there's another one. We'll throw that one in for free, what the heck? So this one, we inked that and we cut through with that wonderful leaf die. Now, talking of apertures as this is, Cutting, die cutting an aperture allows you to create your own stencils. And these cards were done using that very technique. So I die cut Sizzix stencil film using the unicorn and then inked through there before spritzing and peeling away, getting this wonderful kind of starry night sky effect. The leaves, what we did there, we, I die cut several leaves from stencil film, inked through, and then just used a fine line marker over the top. This one, I simply cut a rectangle from my stencil film, ink through, and use that as my background, as the central focus, which actually highlights this wonderful leaf and the stamp. Now, the buildings, they were, we stencil again, we put our stencil film down, we die cut down, ink there quite heavily with, with a couple of colors, like uh, I think I used weathered wood and uh, black soot, spritzed, and I just let that spritzing, I just let it run down like that to get that wonderful grungy cityscape effect. And then finally, simply die cutting triangles from stencil film. And that's how, what I used to get this wonderful mosaic effect behind that church window. And while we're on the subject of apertures, rather than stenciling, how about this? How about creating, oh, let's hold that the right way up, shall we? How about creating a wonderful multicolored background, then adding your die cut apertures over the top, as we did there, and there, and there. And I think, you know, when we talk about beautiful colors uh, and we talk about that misconception, 
of, di um, of distress inks being just for vintage makes. Mm, I think we put that one to bed, haven't we? Then again, gorgeous, stunning die, designed by Tim, of course, stunning colours beneath. And then finally, how about this one? This is kind of sunset effect, and we've used opulent gold cardstock there. Now, we looked at our unicorn before, and we talked about how it created a starry night. Just take a look at these two. Uh, very different colour palettes. You can never go wrong with this. It's always stunning. Please play with this technique. It's so much fun. But I want to tell you a little bit about this one, because this is Tim's colourised snow scene. And what we've done, we've actually created the depth by using Distress Ink. So all of the cards started off white. And we used our inks, different intensities, different shades, different tones, to actually build that scene and give it its dimension. So it's a really cool way to use your colorized dyes. Now, while I'm on the subject, so we talked about colorized. How about, how about this one? Now this isn't a colorized dye, it's a big dye. But rather than use pattern papers or just colored cardstock, I actually use my Distress Inks and then die cut the pieces before putting it together. As indeed I did with that one. Gorgeous colors, all the colors of the rainbow. Something slightly more monochromatic this time. So I inked from left to right and I let the ink fade out as I went along before die cutting these hexagons and attaching them to the card. I love that, it's so simple, but again, it, show, it shows the range and the versatility of the colors. So I simply inked a rainbow effect onto a piece of card before die cutting the individual butterflies from said card. Now this one, ah, oh, look at that, I love it. Look, look at the variety, look at the different tones in there. It's absolutely gorgeous, it really is. Great dyes, great colors. Then another one of our leaves, a very different effect to the other leaf dyes that we saw, but again, all using Distress Inks. And finally, some of my favorites, very, very simple. But what we did here, we inked onto the card, we used spritzing techniques, we used dipping techniques, blending techniques, and then we put our dyes over the top, finding the most interesting parts of the background before die cutting the shapes. Now, one other thing that you can do with Distress Inks, of course, to get very special effects, as you can stamp and you can actually blend the ink pads on the stamp before stamping. Isn't that cool? Now, how about these two? You can see these backgrounds were, you can see the blended inks, but I actually spritzed as well before applying the stamp. That is a cool technique. And these were stamped. And one of the great things about Distress is you get this kind of uneven effect, very deliberate uneven effect. Um, and it just gives you, it gives you something else. It gives you something quite different to what you would get using traditional pigment inks. But of course, once you've stamped, uh, peel the stamp off your stamp block and use your stamp block to create a background. So this was an acrylic stamp block, which I inked with a couple of different colors, spritzed, and then used it like a printing plate. And wow, and, and it's random. Every time you do it, it comes up different, but it's always stunning. So, talking stamping again, how about this guy? Now, what I did here, I actually stamped and used clear embossing powder. So this was just plain, again, just ivory card. But once I'd done that, I inked over the top and the clear embossing powder acted as a resist. So that allowed me to get the punch that these ink backgrounds create, particularly with stamp effects like that. Now, what about texture? I hear you cry. Well, look at these two. Now, 3D embossing, it's a great way to bring out the texture in 3D embossing, or indeed 2D embossing. And this one is kind of like a faux emboss technique where I attached white die cuts to white card before applying my inks and see how, where it comes into contact with the die cut, the color is intensified. Another wonderful way of using it. And do you know what, this, this next cut, I think it's, it's one of my favorites because I love the dye. But again, this started off as cream card and we just ink from the outside in, toning it down as we get towards the center, spritz and pow, those colors, stunning, absolutely stunning. Let's just put them to one side. We're nearing the end, folks. It's a bit of a marathon, this, isn't it? So these I wanted to show you because deliberately because the effect of the ink is very subtle. So 
just putting an edge on a shape helps give you contrast, helps the shape stand out, which is very important when you're using heavy patterns or things like that, but it delineates the edges. And you know what? In some cases, it's quite hard to see, but if it wasn't there, you would know. You would definitely know. So those are just a few ways of using distress inks. There are many more. I haven't even mentioned that you can use them like watercolors, but maybe we'll see that in a blog or vlog coming up very soon. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, if you want to know more about the range of distress products, which are on our website, go to the Tim Holtz Hub area and you'll also see about the Ideology and Stampers Anonymous products as well. Very exciting times, folks. Thanks again for joining me. I've been Pete. See you again soon. Bye.